this podcast absolutely, unequivocally, positively, 100% contains adult material. Mature audiences only, please. Hey, welcome back to me and Mrs. Always Right. I'm your host, me. And I'm Mrs. Always Right. And we're still in that little trailer park in Denver. Turns out this is going to be part three of our interviews at the True Crime and Paranormal Podcast. But the thing is, you know, you're giving these people more exposure. Not that, you know, but they're going to have three more followers or three more people to see it because that's what we have. I feel that... You know, who doesn't want to feel special like, oh, somebody wants to interview me. You you know what I mean? I It's great. And you're doing a great job. I, I, I think this is a great cross marketing technique. And even if we only gain two listeners out of this, that's two more than we had before. Absolutely. And we, we appreciate all of y'all. So. Yes. And in the last episode, we were talking about crawfishing. Crawfishing. You're Crawfish yes, why? Bats. Oh shit, hashtag you missed it. Real quick, this woman and I used to live just north of Pittsburgh. And it was the worst winter that I've ever spent in my entire life. Well, we were we rented this house that no, was we, in the middle of a fucking cornfield. Oh, nice. did you want to say something? No, no, no. You you tell your story. And so it had snowed, it had snowed this night. And there was snow out there. And she was talking about how big and badass and tough she was. And I bet her that she wouldn't run barefoot 100 yards out and 100 yards back. But but, but by the time I could finish that sentence, her shoes were off and she was flash out the fucking door running through this cornfield. And then she came back and she like, where are my 100 bucks? And... I was broke as fuck. I didn't have a hundred bucks. Honey, you still don't have a hundred bucks. You're but I always feel broke like, as fuck. But I feel like you have a nice house. You have a nice truck. I, I know you, you work too. I, I'm not taking away from what you do around the house, but I contribute to our fantastic lifestyle. You don't and, think I contribute? Oh, baby, you're the glue that holds this whole fucking log house together. But you don't crawfish on a bet. You don't bet. That you don't. So, so, what do we have to do to settle this right now? You need now? to give me what have you, I not given you money over the last twenty fucking have years? Have I not given you money? You okay. have. Okay, I thought we so, were a team. Thank you, but a bet is a bet, and it's totally different. Okay, I'm going to tell you what. Nope, I don't want to hear it. It's no, been twenty listen. fucking years. Get over yourself now. <laughs> listen to crawfish, no. narcissistic. <laughs> Hypocritical, hypocritical, narcissistic. Yeah, that, well, you go get your good. fucking money that, yeah. on this goddamn podcast, okay. and then you're you gonna shut that your before. fucking mouth. You've said that you're before. Shut your fucking Never. mouth. It hadn't happened in twenty years. It's not gonna happen now. Two things and, can happen. You can take one one hundred dollar bill or duct tape. Either way, you're <laughs> shutting the fuck up. <laughs> Either way, you're shutting your mouth, bitch. Got you. I'm kidding. I love you. I would I never know. duct tape your mouth shut. Without Unless there was permission. some sexual gratification you know, in there. Without, <laughs> without permission. permission. So the next podcast we have an interview from is from Brew Crime. And these guys, I feel like, are a lot like me. Anybody who drinks during their podcast is definitely a fan of my book. And you coming up is JT and Mike. And you may or may not notice a slight <laughs> accent from Mike. Try to guess where this guy's from. Here's the interview. Hey, my name is Mike. And I'm JT. And we're from Brew Crime Podcast. So I'm I mean, I'm out in Canada. He's out in the other side of the states. Yeah. But you know, do um, true crime. Yeah, we release beer. weekly. We pick a a genre. We pair a beer with each of our cases, and then one there's one case per uh, episode. Um, yeah. and those come out. That's that's available anywhere where you get your podcasts. Um, and we so. usually will stick with a, a a theme for two episodes. I'll do one. He'll do one. And then we'll usually take a bit of a palate cleanser in between. We've got Brew Crime News, okay. which it's just, some of it's actually crime. Some's just ridiculous news from all over the internet. It's a palate Drink cleanser. beer and have fun because the cases aren't that fun. The one question I have, is there more than one beer per podcast? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look, I do about three when I do mine. So When the one empties, uh, you turn around, grab another one from the beer fridge. and 
Yeah. Exactly. You sound like my kind of podcast. <laughs> hey, hey yo. Favorite episode? I was looking back just to double check, and I really was found it interesting the the Bloody Falls Massacre in northern uh, Nunavut territory in Canada. Okay. It happened, I think it was in 1771. And it's really interesting. There is some talk that it may not have actually happened. It might have been made up by a settler, but really interesting. Um, A a fight broke out between two different indigenous groups, supposedly. Oh, wow. And it's it's really interesting. Yeah, I I think it's the first one that I was ever on as a guest. And it was when you, we were doing conspiracies. Ah, yes. um, and I covered uh, the conspiracy of Saddam Hussein having a Stargate. And that's why. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a real thing. That's a thing that happened. That's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. And um, I mean, Stargate's real, right? So he must have one. Of course. Well, not anymore. But <laughs> he had one. Where can we find you guys at? Um, on all social media platforms uh, at Brew Crime. We've got audio on YouTube. No actual videos, really, though. But you can find us there. As well, we've got a group on Facebook. Yeah, but everything's at Brew Crime. Yeah. So, okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And right. Well, I appreciate it. Any Patreon or anything where we do. people can donate? Patreon.com slash Brew Crime. Man, all right. I am uh, kind of looking forward to listening to one of your shows. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well I you. hope you enjoy. Yeah, thank you all very much. Right. Thank you very much. I think you're hard on a party dress. You just like, you beat I'm the fuck out of I'm very hard on a party pad. dress because I can't get it to do what I want it to do. So, now you can see why... I kind of wanted to interview Mike, right? Mike, I think Mike is is really my speed. He's he's like the Canadian version of you. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. Apparently, you're a hypocritical narcissist. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't say that about Mike. I, uh, oh no. You know, as as far as yes, you know, yes, drinking I'm drinking during the pod, podcast. Yeah. See, your feelings are hurt. This is why I don't <laughs> tell you what everybody knows. My feelings are not hurt. They are. They I'm are. Actually I can kinda, tell. I'm actually kind of loving it. It up. I, well, I just oh, want you to you're know. you're looking for some sort of. <laughs> That's why you keep bringing it up. Let me Ooh. pat you on the back because you're a narcissist. That's what I oh, got yes. you. Blue got ribbon you. and narcissism. Yes. 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 Oh my That's god, exactly you're fucking what great. It is. So, say when I become a serial killer, you got the inside track. You can be like the true crime podcast on the me murders. The, yes. The me murders. Yes. Miss is always right. Always knows what me is doing. So, or knows who me is killing. I that's don't know. right. You know. So I am. I, I can't wait to listen to their episode. Hey, give uh go and see Brew Crime. Tell them me and Mrs. Always Right sent you. I appreciate that. So, yes. The next podcast we have interview we have coming up is kind of a little bit of a play on words here, right? Yes. Um, yes, <laughs> I you, think so. I mean, I knew immediately. Is that what you, you were going to say? Yeah, the little bit of play on words. Yes. So yeah. the next podcast is where, where in the world is crime in San Diego? And now that's stuck in my head. <laughs> You know, did you ever watch that? Your kids ever watch it? I mean, I never sat down through a whole episode of Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Right, right, right. I mean, everybody knows it. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, the kids watching it and stuff. And I was just like, wow, this is really silly. So coming up is Adrian and Miggy, right? (laughs) Adrian's wife, Angie, is typically in the podcast, but she is with child, from what I'm understanding, and could not make the trip. (laughs) Did she? Did she fall? And get pregnant. I mean, you know that's what? what they say. Y'all they have been fell. known. You have been known to trip and fall it's and land like, on things. Is all I I'm saying. Fall pregnant. I'm <laughs> sorry. That's not how it happened. But that's how and, people describe and it. And Adrian. The time. <laughs> Adrian. Brent is a great name for a child. Is all I'm saying. Uh, oh yes. And he will not turn out. To be a hypocritical narcissist, I promise. Crawfish and hypocritical. Crawfish and hypocritical. Don't leave that part out. <laughs> gotta, gotta put that crawfish in there. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. Here's our interview with Where in the World is Crime in San Diego. Welcome to Where in the World is Crime in San Diego. We are a true crime uh, podcast based out of San Diego, California. I am Adrian. And I'm Miggy. And then not with us today is my wife, who is eight months pregnant, Angie. You see, as pictured. And uh, we started our podcast about two years ago, just as a passion project where we care about our community back home. And we just want to share community awareness. So we'll deal with episodes that deal with murder, uh, missing people, persons, um, and even do PSA announcements where, say, if there's a high, an increased crime in, uh, say, for instance, DUIs or break-ins or even attempted kidnappings, 
that's where we like to spread awareness with uh, the community. And beyond that, at the end of each episode, we include a SBS or a small business uh, spotlight. And that helps us kind of connect with the community as well and share some of our favorite spots with all the listeners out there. Yeah, so if you ever visit San Diego, we got you covered with, if you want to go to a bar, if you want to go clubbing, we got you. Restaurants, uh, we also got uh, detailing, bakers, you name it. Flower shops. We got you. (laughs) What are the odds you'd give a small Texas podcast a shout out? I mean, hey, we can. You want to? <laughs> I would probably, it wouldn't help go a long way. Uh, yeah, definitely. So where can we find you online? So you can find us on all social media platforms. We are, well, with the exception of TikTok. Uh, we are on Instagram. Uh, where in the world is crime underscore San Diego? And we're also on Facebook. Uh, you can reach us at our platforms for podcasting on Apple, Amazon uh, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, we're out there. I um, mean... Yeah. Do you have a Patreon or anything people can... Uh, we don't have a Patreon. We no. do have a YouTube channel as well. Um, Looking uh, where in the world is crime in San Diego. And yeah. Like it, and subscribe. Yeah. Right. Like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment for sure. So if I was a first time listener, point me to which episode would you want me to come on with? Honest, have a favorite? I have, I have a couple actually. Okay. Uh, there is Gringo Hunters. The very first episode. Okay. Uh, we also have the fun, my fun one was the Tank Man, Mr. Tank Man. I forget what number of episode that is, but that's a really cool episode. Adventures, or what was it? There's so many now that I just forget. Oh, okay. But, okay. but uh, Tank uh, Tank Man uh, episode is a really interesting episode. Awesome. Biggie, what's yours? I'd have to say the, uh, the my first episode that I did with you all. Oh, the, the Killer Couples. Yeah, the Killer Couples. Killer Couples. That, that was a Valentine's Day uh, episode couple of years ago that that i think is probably my favorite awesome right. well, thanks for taking the time let me get a couple of minutes of uh your time and uh i'll talk to y'all in a little bit sounds good thank, thank you. you so much so hear me out nothing against adrian but if i was a dude who was into other dudes tell me miggy is not the prettiest man you ever seen <laughs> <laughs> He looks very well kept. Very well kept. Yes. Ooh, kind of like, um, kind of like the prom king. Yeah, you know, he's got the prom king vibe about that, him. That, yeah, that's a dude you can tell who is very in tune with his appearance. Yes, and I'm Some just saying, people are like that. Other people just wear braids, <laughs> right? Just saying. So Bob Mod is my first man crush. Yes. Okay. Shody's my second man crush. Okay. But Miggy, if you want to come on in, I just I'll make room. I got a big I got big arms for big hugs. There there you go. Big man hugs. There you go. That's awesome. No, I think it's really great how they focus on their city and their crime and their businesses and and they really want to promote what's going on there in in, in, in the local. I do think that's That's, great. That is awesome. Guys, keep up the great work. Okay. If we're ever out in San Diego. Go, we are calling Miggy, okay, to come and hang out, right? And wow. remember, Adrian Brent yes. is a great name for a child. Yes, no crush on anybody yet. No, no, no. You just don't, I just don't think your 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 love hormones are there no more. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh, so, thank you. I mean, they they got to be there. I love you. So, so the the next podcast we have coming up is a couple of people who are into mental illness i i know they lost a sister from mental illness and they've made it their kind of their passion to to be to understand more of what happens with men with mental illness that's good you know get a lot of awareness out there i i feel sometimes that you know that uh, that awareness really needs to be out there people are not you know they they ignore it it's like oh this people you know they got something going on i you know instead of really trying to understand maybe what these people are dealing with i know firsthand that so mental illness runs in my family and oh, of course mental are right oh, I, oh I know that's just it i know i am oh, right I'm, so, I'm sorry but I we know. went to a funeral recently mm-hmm. uh my grandma in there you know we were there were some discussions there about it I got I got a close relative. I'm not going to isolate or anybody's names. This woman's crazy, crazy, <laughs> and it's like I think knowing that you're crazy is half the fucking battle. And once you know it, you can start working on it. Right. 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 It's just that people who have mental illness are they in denial that they have that illness? Sometimes they are. 
Sometimes, and and sometimes, let's say they uh, get medication that helps them out, and so they is it mushrooms? feel better. I mean, maybe. Maybe. It could be. So they start feeling better because the medication is helping them with whatever they've got going on, but... So so they stop taking the medication and it's like a vicious cycle. So then, you know, you get, you know, possibly out there on a limb versus, you know, maybe being being more centered on the medication because, well, I feel better. I don't need to take the medication now. Right. You know, and so so it's it's a terrible cycle, but a lot of people go through it. It, I, it happens a lot. I get it. So here's our interview coming up with. Diagnosing a Killer. Hello. Hello. I'm Coel. And I'm Kenna. And we are Diagnosing a Killer. You want to tell everyone a little bit about us? Yeah. So we are Diagnosing a Killer. We are two sisters and we have a passion for true crime and mental health awareness. Kenna here is a, well, she's in her master's program for forensic psychology. So we're super excited about that. Can't wait for you to get that degree. And uh, mostly we're just mental health forward when we talk about contributing factors to true crime cases, famous true crime cases, and talk about early life, um, maybe, you know, parental figures in their lives or, you know, things that happened to them when they were little that might have been contributing factors to the crimes that they commit later in life. Yeah, absolutely. We always like to say the expression, we are explaining, not excusing the crime. So we're trying to find a reason for it and in turn educate others so that we can have people able to spot the signs so that true crime doesn't happen in the future. If we had the knowledge that we had now, a few years ago, we may have been able to do things differently in our personal lives. So the podcast actually started because we lost our middle sister to mental health and uh, mental illness. And we decided after that we were not going to be in the dark when it comes to helping someone that's struggling. And we wanted to educate ourselves, and it turned into educating others. Yeah. For that cause. Hey, you, so where can we find your podcast? We are anywhere on social media. We are on Instagram. We have Spotify, um, Audible, we Apple, have a Patreon, Apple, yeah, Buzzsprout. Pretty much anywhere you anywhere can find you podcasts. can find bike podcasts. Yeah. Now, do each of you have a different favorite episode? Um, oh gosh, or maybe that's a lot. Or maybe you enjoyed researching and you found out a lot about? I think David Berkowitz was probably one of my more interesting research moments. I think knowing how, you know, and everybody likes to say it's either a crock or it's not or whatever it was, but I think really what stuck with me about David Berkowitz is all the work that he's done to remain in prison because he truly believes that he is wholeheartedly responsible for everything that he did. Um, and he tries to then use that as testimony and testify to others. And he preaches the word, if you will. Um, so yeah, he now chooses to be son of God instead of son of Sam. And, um, I find that really interesting that, and, um, I feel like I have a really deep connection to Shanann Watts. We have the same birthday, which is January 10th. So Shanann Watts is almost always in my thoughts. So yeah. Um, the Chris Watts case was interesting. I have two also, if yeah, we have time. Fine. So uh, take, take your time. our very first episode, I think, really highlights what we want to accomplish with the podcast. It's that of Andre Thomas, a man from Dallas, Texas. Very, very mentally ill. He was uh, severe schizophrenia, but never got a diagnosis because he would consistently ask for help throughout his childhood and he would be turned away and um, ended up him on death row for the murder of his ex-wife, their child, and her newborn. And in prison, he did a lot of self-harm to himself because he was not properly medicated. Still on death row today, that one really hits home. Mm -hmm. And I think I speak for both of us when I say Columbine was a really, really heavy case. That one's actually on our Patreon. So if you want to listen to that one, you can go to patreon.com slash diagnosing a killer. That one was very heavy, especially in the aftermath of the whole thing. She was kind of reading about like the survivors and what happened with them. Many of them committed suicide. Many of them developed mental illness from the experience. And it, it just broke both of our hearts. But it's super important to talk yeah. about that so people can get the assistance they need. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're both passionate about what you do. And I think that's great. So once again, diagnosing a killer. Yeah. Yes. Right. right. And find that anywhere you get your podcast. Absolutely. Anywhere. And Patreon is? Patreon.com slash diagnosing a killer. Right. <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank, yeah, you. thank you so much. All right. Bye. So that was diagnosing a killer. Did I do think that mental illness is very prevalent, you know, but I have a feeling that the way we're treating 
and over medicating some of these people, I don't know if we're solving our problem. I I, you know? I would agree. And, I and maybe you guys maybe you guys can weigh in if especially if you watch this episode and 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 let us know. Leave a comment down there. Do do you think we're over medicating or is there a better way to treat mental illness? You know, once we get people to understand the problems they're suffering from and i'm not saying everybody right i don't think you i I think some people absolutely need medication but i do think that there are some things that we're we're not trying just because we don't necessarily agree that that's a proper treatment i know in in you know i know mushrooms psilocybin Mm -hmm. some of the micro dosing can rewire your brain and i'm i just i don't know do do we try that? Is what we're doing working? That's that's what I want. I don't know. know. Maybe legalize mushrooms, right? Are I'm mushrooms for it. Legal? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't no. know. I mean, they're but, they're like natural. So I mean, why would they not? So is, so well, is pot, I mean, that's right? True. Never mind. Never mind. But but I'm okay with I'm okay with 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 pot too, right? In in right. moderation. I think right. anybody right, who's right, probably right. using every day, and and no harm against you, right? I mean, I don't give a fuck how you live your life. But if you're medicating every day, there's there's something there. Yes. I, I if you I, feel you have to medicate every day, yes. Like me, hypothetically, mm-hmm. may medicate on weekends, camping trips here and there. You know, it's possible. And and I just play around with it, and that's I I think that's more socially acceptable. Dabble, but dabble, dabble. <laughs> dabble. <laughs> you dabble. But you guys, you guys do a great podcast. I uh, I, I I love your passion. I just, you know, you're getting a degree, Kenna. Let us know. Are we are we over medicating? Are we over prescribing? That's just what what I want to know. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Absolutely. I, I feel like I'm being a little judgy. No. You would never judge people. No. Not you. I'm not a judgy Ever. type person. You are not Never. Judgy. Never. I love how you hadn't changed your shirt in three episodes. Is that like your <laughs> podcast shirt? Uh, yeah. Apparently this is apparently. what I'm wearing always to uh, the uh, Me too. It's you like know? moony. I know. I know. Did I ever tell you about the time I mooned? Yeah, I did. What? You, uh, who'd you moon? Paven. Oh. In the starfish. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You told us. You go told back. Us. Go back and look for the starfish episode. <laughs> is it called starfish? I think it is. Oh, my God. Oh, real quick. Oh. I had a comment today from a somebody who said they listened to our Colorado trip. And he goes, yeah, it wasn't much about your Colorado trip. I'm like, I have no fucking idea what to name these episodes. Nice. Excuse me. I know. I'm going to edit that out. You know why? Because you're an awesome editor. Because <laughs> I'm a professional editor. Yeah, That's right. So... You know, name them interview, you know, part one, part two, part three. That's what we're doing. You know, I mean, it's just the easiest way and make sure that I guess you have links to I will make whoever's sure, in the episode. Right? I will make sure I drop links to every episode we put out proper on YouTube, right? The Patreons, meh, look them up. You, you adults, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. no. So, um, also let me know before we do this, and then whoever's like in the first, um, uh, the first first episode episode, we can email Ta- them and tag and, them on Facebook. Yes, but you know, I mean, you're gonna have to let me. Well, you normally do Facebook because you're just. We'll, we'll figure it out yeah, together. We'll get it we're figured a team. out. But we definitely. Some of us are crawfish and uh, hypocritical narcissists. Right? Yeah, but some we'll of us are. Out. Others are not. Do you think you have you have any mental issues? Oh, I'm sure I do. Do you think that I probably have not learned to maybe keep what maybe small ones that i, I have I in do, check i do and you know and i, I don't do know i don't know if i have any i don't know i I'm think sh- sometimes sure you hold a lot in i absolutely hold a lot in always and, and that's always a have. balloon that's a balloon that's always going to burst you understand I, what i'm saying I, I get it but it's been almost 60 years do i need to it hire you a therapist that. no 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 you know no i mean I well, speaking of hiring a therapist, to. okay, mm-hmm. if I ever need a, if I'm ever hit by a truck or or, or a bus or, or garbage a bus truck or garbage or, truck, or, yeah, yeah, I need you to call our next interview, okay? Okay. So okay. the next interview is uh, deranged by juror. There are two practicing attorneys, one's criminal, one's civil. If I ever get hit by a truck, 
I need you to call Pisha. Okay? Got you. Got you. Got me. And I love her name. I Pisha? love her. Pisha. I do too. And, How cool and Ra- is that? And Raven's the uh, criminal attorney. And, so, And that's a cool name as well. If, if you you're know? ever murdered, I know who I'm calling. So okay. coming okay. up next, here is the interview with Deranged by DuJour, which means... It's Latin for deranged by law. Yes. We we learned that because we, we, did, we because had to I, ask. We had because to ask. I did ask, yes. All right, here's that interview. Hi, we're deranged de jure. Um, I'm Raven. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Pisha, and I want to point out I am introducing myself correctly this time, which I normally do, don't do on our podcast. Every single time. It's, it's really weird. It's, it must be a tick at this point. Yeah, but yeah, we are two deranged lawyers discussing our deranged obsessions, which are many. And we get deep into these topics and we try to talk about the unknown facts of these things. The things that push our minds as two practicing attorneys when considering crimes, society, um, and pop culture even. Deranged behavior. Anything deranged. Like, we really want to do an episode on P. Diddy at one point. Like, that's pretty deranged, I'd say. So, um, So I know y'all are both practicing attorneys. Yes. What got you into podcasting? It started as a fun thing, to be honest. We needed a creative outlet. It's um, very difficult to be so technical all the time. It really kind of brings your personality in and it makes you feel, I I don't want to say jaded, but the passion comes out more when you can find that creativity and it's not the day-to-day stuff that bogs you down as an attorney. Right. So It's using a different part of your brain, I think, is um, being able to talk about the things that you care about. I mean, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I am very passionate about what I do, um, but I also really love true crime. Uh, I, I love uh, talking about, you know, cults and all kinds of things like that. So it just gives uh, a way to... I guess, express the narrative in, a, in just a different format. So, well, And I'm a civil plaintiff's attorney, so completely different realm of law. Mm-hmm. And um, I think people miss in the true crime realm that there's another part of law that can lead to the solving of crimes. Like, if you can get your files through civil discovery, um, maybe it could lead to the solving of a crime. So um, I got into it because it was fun. It was a good outlet. And then all of a sudden I realized I could make an impact when six, like six, a couple months into doing this, I realized my friend from Oregon went missing two years ago. We can do something now. We have a voice. We have a platform. We can do something. I'm getting goosebumps. Sorry. You're okay. because, <laughs> because it was so... It was just such a great moment of re- realizing I could have an impact doing this. It couldn't. It didn't just have to be fun and an engaging process for me, but it could actually do something. So, I think that's what we're the. I'm the most excited about for the future of our podcast is um, our series, which we will be calling "Swept Under," um, and it will all involve the disappearance of my friend Eric Brazil from Springfield, Oregon. So we want to do whatever we can to kind of reignite the fire under that investigation. We think getting the word out will do that. So that's why I'm in it now. I'm in it now because I really want to find my friend. And I I have a vested interest in in being here at the festival and meeting so many other victim advocates and survivor families. I I want to help them too. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if I'm a new listener... And, and I will be. Give me give me an episode to start with. Uh, I, I think you should start with the New Mexico prison riots. Uh, uh-huh. We did a series back in February, uh, and we covered everything. We actually interviewed one of the attorneys who was uh, directly involved with defending the people who were... Um, accused of the things that happened in the in the prison riot um it is gruesome it and so that's a trigger warning for you if you're out there and you don't want to hear the the gritty details we try and be some somewhat sensitive there's still people who are alive um from that time but um but it's fascinating and we you know talk about kind of the broader um i guess impact of uh you know prison riots in general so well, and, and to kind of piggyback off of that, I, we had to touch upon how gruesome this was because violence in, within our prison systems remains a huge problem. And this was the bloodiest, most gruesome prison riot in American history. And so we wanted to honor 
the factual gruesomeness of it, because I don't think people were shocked enough into making a change in our prison system. Right. Right, exactly. I think that's. So, a do you guys have a website? Where can I find your podcast at? Yeah, we do have a website. Um, we are at uh, deranged. De jure. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually deranged. De jure, all one word. Dot transistor. Dot fm. Okay. Um, you can find us on all of the socials as well. That'll link you there. Um, and we're on Apple, Spotify, Google, all of uh, Amazon, all of them. Um, our socials are all at. Sorry, at derange.dejore. Um, you can find us on TikTok as well. Um, so, yeah, come and, come and listen right, to us. If I ever need a lawyer, I'm calling you. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. okay. It's absolutely harder than you. I was going to say, I was going to say, you'd have to get hit by a semi truck or something for me to help you <laughs> okay. out. I'm not over here. If I do, I'm calling you. Uh, you got it. I'm here for you. The time today. Hey, man. thank I, you. I talking to y'all. Yeah. I'll see you next time around. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So that was deranged by DeJore, because apparently I mispronounced it. Not not by. It's deranged not DeJore. De, yes. Okay. Latin is not my thing. I <laughs> no, am I get it. Deranged DeJore. Yes. And which means deranged by law. Yes. If you're ever in New Mexico and you commit a crime or you get hit by a truck, these are the two people you should call. Call, e call either one of those, Raven and I Pisha. Just, Pisha. I just need to know, do you practice law in Texas? I may need <laughs> a good attorney either exactly, way it goes. Exactly. So if you, if you, you know, travel to New Mexico or, you know, you travel to... Uh, Chicago, you know, something. I mean, so you, you got I'm people. I'm starting to get covered. Yes, ain't I? yes. Yes. You know, for, for all your worldly Somehow travels. Somehow I feel, though, <laughs> that if I have to call one of these attorneys, that they'll be like, yeah, I still got to charge you, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they still got to make their money. And I'd be like, how about a, how about a spot? On a podcast with nine fucking listeners. How about that? Exactly. Or Word. or I can or, buy you a, a gummy a, in Denver. I you know. I'm just I mean, saying. she's not lying. <laughs> so hey, we appreciate you being here for part three of the true crime and paranormal podcast interviews. Festival. Festival yes. interviews, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop us an email at me and Mrs. Always Right at gmail.com. All complaints go to Trevor the intern. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and X. And help support this podcast by becoming a member of Patreon at patreon.com slash me and Mrs. Always Right. There you will get pre and post show content right along with unedited episodes. Yeah. And the, the reason why we're asking for money is, um, first of all, Beer's not cheap. And second of all, do you realize how much tape we're using in this whole VCR <laughs> thing? You know, all these interviews. No, I know. Kidding, we're still recording know? on a VCR. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm also, just kidding. one of us has a $100 bet to pay. One bet of to us pay. might have a bet that they haven't paid bet to in pay. years. Yes. Yes. We'd like to thank Rollcap Media for producing this week's episode. If you like what you see and you need audio or video uh, editing, contact Media at gmail.com. Do you like what you see? I do, I do. I think you've done a fabulous job. We, we have grown. We we have actually yes, grown a lot. Yes, because now we have four listeners versus four. two. You four. know, we've doubled. Doubled. We've doubled. When you say it like that, it makes it sound so much better. I know. <laughs> I know. We've doubled right. in listeners. We'll see you next week with part four in the final episode. It, it will be the final one. You know, um, th there was a lot of people willing to give us interviews. Yes. And so, you know, we actually took it. You know, I mean, we, we want to help these people think, out. And I actually think we're doing really good in this. I, I think, you know, we, we may or may not have found our calling by interviewing other podcasters. I, I mean, there's so much you can do when so it comes to podcasting. All right. So. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Yes. I love you, baby. I love you too, honey. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Merle. I love Merle. I love Merle. I love Merle. <laughs>